In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, Saint Joseph, Saint Gertrude the Great, our patron saints and guardian angels, and the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Gertrude, who is also sometimes referred to as Saint Gertrude the Great, was a Cistercian nun, and she was left in the care of the convent at the age of five. It seems her parents died and she was orphaned and so she was left under the care of the Cistercian nuns in Germany uh, where she was born and she stayed in the convent and grew up and uh, must have joined at some time in her early womanhood because at the age of 26 she writes that she finally decided to to have a conversion. She was complaining that she's to our Lord that she had not served him and that she finally was ready to to give herself completely to him and serve him. Uh, almost like she was having a conversion. You might think, well, living in such a holy place like that, you know, well, she probably, you know, like many things, sometimes we begin something maybe with less than perfect motives and maybe not with our whole heart. And eventually she had the grace to embrace God's will, even in her religious vocation, and finally served him not just out of duty, but now out of loving duty and with a greater love for Christ. We thank St. Gertrude because she's the one who also, in her writings, she was a great student of Latin. She wrote eloquent Latin. And uh, she wrote many things on spirituality. We have her to thank for promoting the Sacred Heart of Jesus devotion. She had a great love for Christ and his passion. And um, she also is um, uh, one that we can look to to um, see that uh, she gave a, uh, shows this continuity that uh, the love that she had for the Sacred Heart was just something that was already, you know, a part of the apostolic tradition was the practice of the church. Before you can start writing about the devotion to the Sacred Heart, it has to exist, you might say, first in the hearts of the people. And obviously she was one who uh, was given the grace to promote that devotion uh, by her writings. Not much of her writings are in existence, sad to say, but yet we have her great example and her witness. It's interesting that St. Gertrude is a contemporary with the saint we celebrated yesterday, St. Albert the Great. They both lived in the 1200s. Uh, she towards the end of, of um, St. Albert's life and also another contemporary of theirs at this time in history is Blessed John Dun Scotus, who eventually would uh, end his life in Germany. But um, so we have these great lights all kind of in the church around the same time and what a blessing it must have been to have these great uh, mystics and theologians to enlighten and to fire the hearts of the faithful with their sound teaching. We look at this, you know, the example of St. Gertrude and we are in this year of faith that we know that we can know our faith. We can know everything we can about our Catholic religion, but there's another grace that we have to have, and that is to love it. To love it enough to have that conviction and that fire, you might say, in our hearts to see that it's not just a bunch of um, doctrines, but really it is a relationship with Christ, with the Holy Trinity, with the divine persons, and especially, you know, the thing that fired uh, St. Gertrude in her her love for God was her devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That our faith that we celebrate uh, was revealed to us by the Word made flesh. And that really impinged upon her heart the reality that God became man for us, uh, came to die for us. 
And so the faith that we have been handed on to us was given to us at a great price, as St. Paul reminds us, the precious blood of a lamb, a pure lamb, the, the lamb of God. And so today as we uh, ponder more, maybe during this uh, another day in the year of faith, let us uh, call to mind you know, the great blessings that we have received and ask God to, to maybe if we are just, you might say, coldly living out our faith, in a, maybe in a cerebral, you know, just in an intellectual way, that we have the grace to be in our hearts to be inflamed and enlarged with love so that it's a living faith, a faith that is informed and you might say the soul that moves it is this charity, the love of God that is so important, which is of course, of all the things that's going to pass away, the one thing that's going to remain is the love of God. Charity is the highest and will always be um, uh, eternal. Um, let us pray and ask uh, St. Gertrude today that uh, to help us in our conversion and the last thing we want to point out, St. Gertrude was also greatly devoted to the poor souls. She did many uh, spiritual favors for the poor souls. Uh, she had a great love for them and tried to do many things to obtain their release from purgatory through her prayers and sacrifices. And she wrote this prayer, which is attributed to her. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus Christ, in union with the masses said throughout the world today, for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, for those in my own home and within my family. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.